Hey guys, it's me, Mario. And today we're going to to continue series 4 of Beast Quest The Ghost Beasts with Equinus, the spirit horse. How you guys doing today? <clears throat> Hope you're doing well. Had to make it put it closer. So it's a little far away. Yeah, my hair's not doing it today. And let's begin. <clears throat> Equinus, the spirit horse. Prologue. Now it's your turn to give me a dare, Jack told his friend, Flint. The boys were playing on the edge of their village. The sun had almost set over Irinal, and heavy shadows were creeping across the ground. The sky was the color of a deep purple bruise, but the approaching darkness just made their game of dare even more exciting. Flint looked around and Jock saw his eyes light up as he pointed towards some trees in a nearby field. <clears throat> there you put pinsa uh, there you to put in there you to pinch an apple from a former grill Grindal's gar orchard orchard Boy. said Flint. No problem, Jog halted vaulted over a wooden fence, strolled into the orchard and climbed up the tallest apple tree. He'd show Flint he was scared. Even though grumpy old farmer Grill doll would chase him away with a stick if he saw him. As he reached the top branch, he had a good view of the road that led away from the village and ran all alongside the boundary of Aventia. King Hugo's realm. The boundary was marked by a high forbidden wall, into which was set an old iron gate. Even from the position in the tree, Jack couldn't see over it. Beyond the wall was the forbidden land. Jack knew that no one ever went there. The other villagers wouldn't even talk about it. But looking at the sinister black walls gave him an idea for the best dare ever. He plucked an apple, swung down from the tree, and jumped back over the fence. You win that one, admitted Flint, as Jack, as Jack tossed him the apple. Now here's your next dare, said Jack. It's so frightening, I bet you won't do it. Nothing's too frightening for me, Flint said confidently. I dare you to go into the Forbidden Land, challenged Jack. He folded his arms, sure that his friend would admit defeat. I wonder which forfeit I should give him, he thought. But Flint didn't say a word. Instead, he strode down the road to, ga to the gate in the wall. Jack ran after him, his heart beating fast. You don't have to do it, he called. It was a joke. It was just a joke. I never said no to a dare. I never say no to a dare, 
said Flint, and he grasped his and he grasped the iron work and began to climb. Then I'm coming with you. The gate was rusty and felt unstable beneath Jack's grip as he scrambled up it. But he couldn't let his friend go alone. The boys were soon fitting astray to the gate. Astray, astride the gate, staring in amazement at the sight before them. The forbidden land was gray as far as the eye could see. The ground was covered with a thick layer of dust, and the only trees that grew near by were blackened and gnarled. It's horrible, Flint said with a gasp. Everything is everything is so dead looking, murmured Jock in reply. They slid to the ground of the forbidden land and walked slowly away from the gate. Their boots left deep prints in the ash-like powder. Jack saw his friend shiver. You've done the dare, Flint said. His voice sounded odd and flat in this strange place, and the gate suddenly seemed far, farther away. Let's get back, Jack nodded. But just then he spotted something on the horizon. What's that? Flint, Flint uh, followed his gaze. It looks like a dust cloud. His face suddenly greased with horror, and he glanced down at his feet. Can't you feel the ground moving? Jack could. <clears throat> Jack could. The gray earth beneath his beneath their feet was vibrating and sending shudders of shudders up their legs. Something's coming, he whispered. The boys stood uh, transfixed as the cloud of dust got nearer and the vibrations coming from the ground became stronger. It's a horse, Flynn exclaimed, peering into the distance. And it's big. Jack looked hard. His friend was right. He could just make out a flint, flint of hooves and realized that the hoof beats must be causing the vibrations. He caught a glimpse of a man sitting tall in the saddle. I wonder who the rider is. He said as the horse got closer. No, wait. With, re with rising horror, he saw that the man's body was joined to the horse. It was some kind of beast, part man, part horse. But the beasts didn't exist, did they? They were just made up stories of Aventia that Jock repeated when he wanted to scare his little brother. The beast suddenly became transparent, and Jock felt his jaw drop open in shock. I can see right through him. F through him. Flint gasped and swallowed nervously. It's a ghost, and it's coming straight for us. Jack and Flint dashed for the gate, their feet churning up the gray dust. The beast was getting closer, but the boys were fast runners. We're going to make it, Jock thought with relief. However, just as they got to the wall, Flint gripped and fell, uh, sprawling into the dust. Jack quickly helped him stand, but above their heads came uh, an almighty ho roar. The friends looked up. The beast, solid once again, was one was on top of them and rearing up on its 
hind legs, ready to crush them. Here's that image. Holding it for a few seconds so you guys can properly look at it. <clears throat> Jack gazed Jock gazed at the monster and saw an impression of joy expression of joy and delight echo edged into its skull like face. The boys were paralyzed with fear and screamed as the terrifying beast lunged down. Jock felt an icy cold sweep over his whole body, and gasped as he realized that the beast had turned ghostly again, and somehow passed straight through him. Tears of despair trickled down Jack's face as he felt something being torn from him. He forced himself to look at Flint. His friend stood pale and expressionless. With his last thought, Jack knew what had happened to them both. The beasts were real, after all, and although they hadn't been crushed to death, their fate was something far worse. The beast had taken their life force. And that was the prologue. Prologue like this really makes me question the age on these things. Seven and up. <clears throat> really makes me question. <laughs> really makes me question that the past was far darker than it than I remember. My younger years. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> hope you guys enjoyed the prologue of Equinus, the spirit horse. And I hope you will join me next Thursday, <clears throat> where I continue with chapter one. New danger. Excuse me. <clears throat> and I hope you guys like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you guys are interested in more Beast Quest videos. <sighs> I love reading. Sometimes. I really need to finish the third book of... <clears throat> oh, I need to start the sentence again. <laughs> I really need to finish Rickety Stitz book three. And start on... Uh, and start reading series six of Beast Quest. <clears throat> I have the sixth series ready to go to read for myself, so... I just have to finish the Rickety Stitch book that I'm reading currently, so. <sighs> Hope you guys stay tuned, and I will see you in the next video. And hello to all you new subscribers out there. If you guys subscribe, that's very good. Very nice. <laughs> right. See ya.